Hi, Chris Wallace from Second Swing. We're with Titleist today in Oceanside, California. I've got Joe Saywitz with me. Joe is one of the senior bidders here at the Titleist Performance Institute. If it looks like I've worked up a lather, I have. Joe put me through the paces mm -hmm. this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Titleist with a bunch of brand new products, getting ready to hit the market. Mm -hmm. T-Series irons, U500, U510 utilities, TS2, TS3 hybrids, mm -hmm. and 620 MBCB irons. Correct. I had a chance to hit them all, and then you actually went through a fitting with me, yep. which was an outstanding experience. Let's talk a little bit about the fitting first, and then yeah. I've got some things I want to talk about about the different clubs. Sure. What was really unique for me in terms of the irons is that after hitting them all, it really came down to two irons. One of them was the new T200, mm -hmm. and the other was the MB, the muscle back. Yep. Yeah. One of the better shots I hit. <laughs> I think this is going to be a, a decision of your own. I think you can justify both MB or a T200. Which probably would go against the grain of what maybe most people would expect for a final two. Yeah, I would say on paper they're probably more, you know, contradicting than more similar, I guess. So, yeah, yeah I could see that being the case. But what you found with me was the narrower sole really helped my turf interaction. Very that beneficial. Was a big advantage with the MB, but mm -hmm. as well with the T200, with that new, uh, what you've done with the sole, yep. that worked extremely well. And when we got into the mid irons, the longer irons, the, no, the difference was noticeable in terms of the land angle and the ball speed. Right, so essentially, the reasoning behind going more so along the lines of the T200 for you was the fact that you were hitting it a little further. So with the, the caveat of going to the MB, you were losing a little yardage, but still the narrower sole was helping you get through the turf. So to keep you in a stronger lofted model, but having the benefit of that narrow, narrow sole to, to get through the turf a little better, that's where the T200 kind of shined, especially in the longer irons. And I think you would agree with this, that you mentioned stronger lofted model. I think people are getting too caught up in loft instead of how far a golf club goes how's the gap in your bag, Right. and with what we saw, whatever the loft was, the land angles were great, and then when we went from a 7-iron to an 8-iron or a 7-iron to a 5-iron, the gapping was great. Yep, yep, so it's it, as long as the metrics make sense in terms of how they should start to separate, that's why we put that cap on, you know, it's typically about 5 miles an hour separation between iron to iron, mm -hmm. and as long as you stay within that threshold and everything works out accordingly, you, you make sure that you hit your speeds and then you got to make sure that you hit your land angles, your, your descent angle into a green. Right. For any club that's hit off the turf is what we would consider a scoring club, especially if you're hitting it into a green. So making sure that the speeds are proper and, and appropriately gapped and then making sure that you're maintaining a steep angle of descent into a green to essentially have your longest iron or club that you're hitting into a green leave you the same distance putt on the shorter side relative to you know a pitching wedge or something like that. So yeah, that's and they were fantastic in that regard. The other thing that stood out to me, now a lot of people are going to look at T200 and immediately think this is replacing AP3. You guys don't want people to think that and having hit them both, I can tell you there's nothing similar about those irons. Yeah, that was that was kind of why we dropped the name. It was it would, it's its own, you know, animal so to speak. Yeah. That's why it's it, there's a lot of there's there was too many differences, but but in a in a good progressive way to where we 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 moved direction with what we were going to call these things. And the biggest thing, I thought the I thought the blade shape was a little bit more compact. I thought there was slightly less offset, but the biggest difference for somebody who maybe hit AP and three in the past like me and who maybe wasn't the biggest fan was feel. I thought the AP three felt a little firm, a little clicky, and the new T200 feels really s like soft but explosive. Kind of impact. It gave you the feel of a, of a forged club, but the forgiveness of that cast iron club that you've always been used to playing. Exactly. Good. So the, the T200 and the T100, which 
would equate probably most similarly to AP2, mm -hmm. the separation of feel was very minimal. So I could actually see certain players maybe going to a combo set of those irons. Absolutely. Um, both in terms of shape, feel, top line, everything. Yep. And when we start to blend sets and you see players switching over in the longer irons to you know, something different that doesn't match the, the shorter irons for them, there's always rhyme and reason, and it's, it's usually because of the fact that they're not reaching their speeds or their descent angles. Yeah. So now that we've made things a lot more similar than different, it, it just makes it a lot easier to blend sets for players that would benefit from the technology that's offered in one head that wasn't necessarily offered in the, the rest of the set that they like. Yeah, and with the tungsten weighting in the T200, the mid irons were really easy to get in the air, super stable at impact. Mm -hmm. I actually hit the four iron extremely well in the T200, but it was outshined by the U500, yeah. which is a brand new product, and it, a lot of players are going to really like that. So there, there's a lot more tungsten weighting at the bottom of that utility iron that isn't necessarily present in the T200 iron, so that's what you were noticing. It was a CG, a center of gravity location, a little lower and a little bit more appropriately positioned to help with that player that doesn't quite get as optimal of those, you know, that speed separation and that descent angle. I mean, we, we really hammer it hard with that descent angle when we're talking about that because that's the first and foremost thing that people equate to stoppage power on a green. You know, leaving yourself shorter putts, that's, that's what we've known and have done our research on to, statistically speaking, how you would go out and shoot lower scores. Yeah, and in terms of the actual ball speed distance numbers, between the T200 four iron mm -hmm. and the U500 four iron, those numbers are pretty similar, but jumping from 43 to 45, 46 in land angle was a big deal. Yeah, I mean, three degrees of a land angle difference could be the difference between, again, you leaving yourself a five foot putt or potentially 15 to 20 feet, which in, you know, in retrospect, it's not a bad thing that you're still holding greens, but when it comes down to how am I able to give myself the best fighting chance to shoot as low of a score as I want, you have to be able to attack those pins on a carry distance and, and leave yourself as short a possible putt as you can. Yeah, and I really like the look of the U500, very little offset, compact blade. I'm a decent player and that appeals to me visually. Mm -hmm. Also super solid at impact, a little reminiscent of the TMB. The U510 was really good as well. M maybe not ideal for me with the wider sole, Yep. but that club's super easy to hit in the air, and that's gonna be a neat option for some golfers who need to get out of long irons, but maybe don't get along with hybrids. Absolutely, yeah, and especially for the player that wants the ability to be able to hit a long iron such as those off the turf and still acquire a good land angle, and then for the player that wants to you know, flip-flop how they would utilize that club for maybe an off-the-tee option. Yeah. A lot of players are going to be looking at, at adding those into the bag for just keeping something that's going to put them right down the middle of the fairway, but, you know, have the feel and controllability that they get with the rest of the irons. Yep. And then as we went down deeper into the sort of, I guess, the top end of the bag, the next club that you would have fit me into was the new TS2 Hybrid, which you know, compared to 816, 818, which people will be familiar with, mm -hmm. with H1, uh, sort of the, the, the club that maybe fits that sweeper, that shallower player, which I am, it's got a little more compact shape, really looks really good. One of the best looking hybrids I've seen. Yeah. But saw explosive ball speeds. I know that club face is 16% thinner mm -hmm. and saw the effects, ball speed numbers jumped even maybe a notch above where we thought they were going to go. Yeah, so it was kind of a, a mixture between getting the the hot, you know, for a lack of better terms there, the, that, that velocity that you see off metals and incorporate that into the technology that we've developed in 818 to play more like irons, to be able to attack pins with hybrids and treat them like irons, because they're essentially just replacing irons that didn't quite justify themselves to, to make its way into your bag. So to get that hot feel and that really firm 
speed off the face, but having the playability like an iron, that's where those two things just mesh together. Yeah, and I think it's also worth noting from a fitting standpoint, those hybrids are outstanding. Not only do you have the SureFit hosel, mm -hmm. which allows you to adjust lock and lie independently, but you can adjust the weight in the sole to affect swing weight. And for me in particular, we went to a little heavier weight yep. kind of to help me with my transition and it really sort of tightened up my dispersion. Yeah, so we, we went a little short with your hybrids. So usually when you shorten things, you typically want to try to, and it's, you don't have to do this every time, but you'd want to try and combat that shortening the club and add a little weight back to the head. And it's usually in increments of about two grams. So other than that, a lot of the weight changing has more to do with feel. and for different players, you can kind of pick up on, on what their needs would be. But for you, it was a quicker tempo when you start miss hitting it. So to, to help combat that, you add a little weight at the tail end and it kind of slows you down, but in, a, in the best of way. Sure. So that's what you were noticing. And again, the TS2, probably the better fit for me, just in terms of the way I attack the ball. But the TS3 felt super solid as well. For somebody who's a little steeper, really goes after it, mm -hmm. almost like a, a more like an iron, yeah. as opposed to a fairway. Well, that's going to be a great option, and that of course comes with the SureFit CG, which gives you even another fitting option to dial that player in. Right. Yeah. It'll it'll have the the cylindrical you know weight bar that we can put that in, kind of similar to what we have in our metals, uh, you know, there are our woods and and drivers, and. Um, it gives you the option of being able to relocate center of gravity depending on what someone's mishit might be. So the T200 is what I ultimately would have kind of landed on, but I want to mention a couple of the other irons as well because mm -hmm. while they weren't necessarily the perfect fit for me, there was a lot to like about them. The MB we said was a surprise in yeah. terms of how well it performed. Mm -hmm. Having hit in the past, the 718 MB, the 716 MB, to me, this was the most forgiving MB that I can remember. I know some work's been done with the, with the soul to try and improve turf interaction. Mm -hmm. They've uh, progressively uh, blade lengths a little bit longer on a couple of longer irons. They were really outstanding. And then the T100 was a beautiful looking iron. A little bit smaller than AP2, felt a little bit softer, but it still had that tungsten weight yep. that's gonna be make it, you know, a lot more forgiving than you would ever expect for an iron in that profile. Yep, so the, the T100 has gotten even closer to playing more like a blade iron. Yeah. So the leading edge has gotten slightly sharper in, in the sense of how it would interact with turf. Now it's still gonna have a little bit of a pre-worn leading edge, so it's not gonna feel like it's sticky through the turf, mm -hmm. but it's getting you closer to just that blade profile that a lot of people would love to be in, but just, you know, somewhat feel like they're not quite qualified, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, it's no, it's no surprise to me that that's the guys who adopted that immediately, mm -hmm. and that'll ultimately end up being your number one plate iron on yeah, tour. Yeah. But then also, uh, wrapping it up, I want to mention T300 for that, you know, mid to higher handicap player. Yeah. A uh, little bit wider sole, again, just because of the way I come from the inside, kind of shallow, not ideal for me. But the shape of that iron, for as much forgiveness, launch, and ball speed as packed into it, is really traditional, really clean, and even improving on 718 AP1, the feel has even gotten a little bit better. We've tried to take that to heart, so we've tried our best to get rid of as much offset as we could, because that's usually the number one thing that players would have a complaint about, is just that, that too much offset that just doesn't suit their eye. And regardless if they need offset, just the fact that it doesn't necessarily sit comfortably for them, it usually equates to some not so good shots. So to get closer to you know the blade length that we had in our last model AP3, that's kind of where they went this direction and getting yeah. something in the T300 to get you know a little bit more compact, but still have just as much, if not more, forgiving capabilities or forgiving qualities built into that iron. Absolutely, Joe. I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. <laughs> you wore me out, yep. but it was a blast, and I really appreciate your time. It was great having you. Thanks. Thank you.